so so basically some of these old assumptions they they might not be true after all that's right some of the well-known asthma guidelines such as the one that's uh, published by the National Institutes of Health that a lot of doctors follow. You know, they say that you don't need to be so worried about the intermittent patients and don't need to necessarily test them. And even for the more severe persistent patients, you know, if you do testing, you don't need to worry about testing for pollens because pollens aren't so important. So both of those older assumptions, you know, are called into question by this new study. And so the patients who only use a rescue inhaler now and then, the, the so-called intermittent patients, they may be the ones who are really uh, uh, also at risk of becoming out of control when it's their pollen season. It may be important to know that they have these pollen triggers. The doctor and, and the parent can jump in perhaps ahead of the pollen season and increase medication or increase efforts to decrease exposure to these allergen triggers and so uh, keep the asthma in better control during the pollen season. So we need to identify these uh, intermittent children with regard to their allergy triggers just like we've done the persistent uh, asthmatic patients. Now, for the parent who may be hearing about this research at this point and may be now worried that their child may be more susceptible than <laughs> they thought before, what can they take away from this research? What are things they can do? Uh, I think the most important thing that we want them to get out of this is uh, that if their child hasn't been tested uh, for allergic triggers, that that's very, it's very important to have that done. Uh, this can be done either using traditional skin testing, uh, as the you know the allergy specialist might do, or if that sort of testing isn't readily available, or uh, you don't want to have the, the skin testing. Uh, there is now excellent blood testing available. Requires just a simple blood sample, like any other uh, blood test, and can identify triggers. Uh, in a similar fashion. So either the skin testing or the blood testing uh, are good ways of doing this. Those NIH guidelines that we were, we were referring to a minute ago, they say that you can uh, use either kind of testing, but the important point is that testing gets done so that we can find out what trigger or triggers uh, a given asthmatic child uh, is uh, susceptible to, sensitized to, and so that we can take the appropriate measures to decrease exposure to those allergens uh, or to direct medication uh, or to get a specialist consultation. You know, there are a number of steps which might be appropriate based on the test results, but unless you do the testing, you don't know which uh, allergens are important for, for that child and you don't know what's uh, important to do next. So really the take-home message should be that even the intermittent patients who we thought were not, you know, to be worried about so much, they need a, a full evaluation. And, you know, the only way to identify these triggers uh, is through uh, having the child tested.